Three hotels in Windsor have become home temporarily for more than 500 people from around the world. They've entered Canada from the United States seeking asylum over the past couple of months. The city and local service providers are supporting them, but they're being stretched thin. Yesterday, city committee recommending asking for a pause in the arrival of new arrivals until Ottawa and the province can pitch in with additional aid. To talk about this further, we've reached Stephen Lynn. He's currently in studio with me. He's the city's manager of social policy and planning. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. So what's the latest information you have about how many asylum seekers are here in Windsor? So the latest information we've received from the federal government is there's been approximately just over 800 that have been transferred here to Windsor uh, between the three hotels. How do they wind up here? So when they come through the uh, United States uh, Canadian border at Ruxham Road, uh, they're then uh, processed by the RCMP and CBSA, and then they are transferred here by bus. Mm. So bus all the way from Roxham all the way to Windsor? That's my understanding. And where are they staying? Uh, there's three hotels that the federal government has um, has have established. Uh, obviously, we're not going to say where those hotel, hotels are for security reasons, but uh, they are in the city of Windsor. What are the steps that they need to go through as they seek to stay in Canada? So my understanding is that there's um, a multiple step process, and uh, once they are uh, processed by the RCMP and vetted, uh, then they go through this immigration claim uh, for their refugee or asylum claimant status. And so they start to go through this four-step process, um, which ultimately is going to be ruled on um, by the Immigration Refugee Board. It's quite a number of people that are coming into Windsor over the last few months. So how is the city involved in supporting these people? So currently we're involved uh, by providing assistance through our employment and social services program. So uh, the asylum claimants that are here uh, are eligible for Ontario Works. And so we have city staff on site at the hotels assisting with those Ontario Works applications. And we're also uh, liaising with other partners that are providing assistance in different sectors like health, um, education, uh, just with sort of coordination of services. And uh, we also have the Windsor-Essex Local Immigration Partnership who's doing a lot of work um, uh, to help with uh, coordination of the of the different services too. In what ways has the city reached its limits in being able to provide this kind of help? Well, what we're seeing right now is really unprecedented, and uh, we want to ensure that the asylum claimants that are here in Windsor are going to be successful and not going to be um, any worse off. And so we brought brought this report to council so that uh, they were aware, and we wanted to ensure that uh, you know Windsor is a welcoming community, and we have been able to respond appropriately uh, for all eligible services and same with a lot of our partners that are assisting. But we just want to uh, make sure that uh, with these recommendations that we feel that we're at capacity right now without additional resources or, 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 um, or financial support. And how is that impacting the asylum seekers themselves? Well, right now, I think it's a little too early to say. It's been about two months that they've been here in the hotels when transfers have started. So speaking with our colleagues from IRCC, uh, they have told us that Windsor has been considered a best practice in how we've responded to the needs here in, um, in Windsor. And so providing services on, on site for the asylum claimants, I think, has been extremely helpful because, you know, there are uh, concerns around transportation. Uh, they don't have uh, bank accounts, financial uh, income when they come here. Mm. And so to provide support sort of in a wraparound mindset, um, you know, and there's families with children that are in the hotels. Uh, there's um, all different ages. There's uh, 46 different nationalities, 23 different languages. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of barriers. And I think um, being uh, on site has been extremely beneficial for the, the claimants that are here. What could the federal and provincial governments be doing to make this easier for the city and local agencies? Well, I do have to say that IRCC has been extremely um, uh, transparent and a, and a great partner with communicating to us on a, on a frontline level as well, if, as well with our partners. I think what these two recommendations to council was about that uh, the number of hotel rooms that they've currently um, established, we feel that that's, we're at capacity and we have concerns that there might be downward pressure on the, say, housing um, sector uh, should there be... Um, unsuccessful tenancies. And so uh, the second piece was around a local lead settlement agency being identified to assist with the coordination between the three hotels that are currently operating. 
Has the city received any response so far regarding uh, these requests for more support? Uh, from this formal request, uh, this will go to our regular meeting of council. We've had informal meetings with both the provincial and the federal government, and so those conversations are ongoing. You and other city officials have made a point of emphasizing that Windsor is a welcoming community. Why do you feel that's important to state explicitly? Well, I think it's been demonstrated in our past. Um, you know, in 2015, 2016, there was the pledge by the federal government for the 25,000 Syrians. And so Windsor had welcomed over 600 of Syrian um, refugees. And, uh, you know, Windsor is extremely diverse. It's in the, the data, the, the latest census uh, shows that we have a diverse uh, community here. And, you know, it's it's also been evident when we hear from our federal partners who've seen how the the local uh, social support as well as health and education have come around to to welcome these asylum claimants. So I think I want to just emphasize that this report isn't about not welcoming the asylum claimants, it's just ensuring that uh, while they're here that uh, we're setting them up for success as they're going through this process for their claim. Is there any concern at all that this message might be misunderstood? Um, uh, if it is misunderstood, I hope that we can clarify that, that, you know, the city of Windsor specifically, which I can speak for, has been uh, serving asylum claimants through Ontario Works for many years because they are eligible to apply. You know, and there's a lot of other city of Windsor services that they would be eligible for as well. So we've been doing this for a number of years. And, you know, if there is any misconception, we just want to ensure that it isn't not about saying we don't want any more for, um, we just want to ensure that those that have been transferred here are going to be successful as they, you know, spend time in Windsor waiting for that claim to be processed. Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Stephen Lynn is the City of Windsor's Manager of Social Policy and Planning. Uh, for more on this, we've reached the Liberal MP for Windsor Tecumseh. Eric Kuzmircek is on the line now. Good morning, uh, Eric. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Uh, so what can you tell us about why hundreds of these asylum seekers are being sent to Windsor? Well, so first and foremost, I wanted to say that uh, yesterday I organized a, uh, a meeting between uh, Mayor Drew Dilkins and the Immigration Minister, Sean Frazier, and we had an, an excellent conversation. Uh, the mayor had a chance to share, uh, obviously, the challenges and the concerns uh, that, uh, that the city and, and our community are, are facing with this influx of, uh, of asylum seekers. And really what it stems from is uh, the vast majority um, are, are entering uh, Canada through Roxham Road in, in Quebec City, or excuse me, in, in Quebec. And so over 40,000 have crossed last year. It's a huge influx. And uh, this is a spike we simply have never seen before. And so what's happening is we signed an agreement with the United States called the Safe Third Country Agreement, which basically means that if an asylum seeker passes through a safe country to get to Canada, they actually have to turn around and they have to file their asylum claim in that, uh, in that third country, so in the U.S. The problem is, is that that third country agreement, there's a loophole there. And so that, that third country, safe third country agreement envisions uh, asylum seekers crossing through regularized crossing points or border points. So what happens in, in Roxham Road in Quebec is that that is not a, there, there's no formal border crossing there. And so the, the safe third country agreement doesn't envision such a scenario. And so there's a loophole there. And so Canada, by international law, has to welcome the asylum seekers, even though they're passing through the United States, which is considered, considered a safe third country. So what I can tell you, and it's something that the minister had shared with uh, with our mayor, which is that we are in negotiations and conversations with our American counterparts to change the third country, the safe third country agreement. Uh, that is absolutely uh, uh, fundamental to stemming that tide of, of asylum seekers. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, that progress has been made. And uh, we, uh, we hope uh, to see an agreement uh, in, in the very near future. And I know that the minister will be actually visiting uh, in Washington with his counterpart very shortly as well, too. So getting that safe third country agreement with the United States altered and fixed is absolutely critical uh, to uh, to getting a handle on this influx of uh, asylum seekers. And, uh, and again, but that requires an agreement 
uh, with the United States. It's not something that we can do unilaterally. Eric, that's obviously going to be a conversation that's going to be ongoing. But I'm curious, do you agree that right now that local communities are being asked to shoulder too much of the load in helping these newcomers? Well, you know, the uh, the Minister uh, of Immigration recognized right off the bat in, in our meeting um, that uh, our community has been incredibly generous and, uh, and and incredibly welcoming. And really, that's that's par for the course for our community. We are incredibly generous. We are incredibly welcoming, and we've and we've been that uh, for for generations. And and we've shown that even more recently in terms of welcoming Ukrainian refugees, uh, welcoming uh, Afghan Afghan refugees, welcoming Syrian refugees. We've done that. We've always welcomed them with open arms. arms. But the minister also recognizes the, uh, the the tremendous strain that it does put on communities and. So one of the things that we're working on right now is actually making sure that other communities actually share in carrying that challenge. Uh, And so what you're seeing right now is other communities from coast to coast to coast taking in asylum seekers so that it doesn't fall on the shoulders of just, you know, a handful of communities. So you're seeing, for example, on the West Coast, you're seeing Surrey, B.C., taking in asylum seekers. You're seeing, uh, for example, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, progress uh, for Winnipeg taken in asylum seekers. The Atlantic provinces have uh, agreed to take uh, take in uh, asylum seekers as well, too. And so, really, all of Canada is stepping up here to do their part, and certainly our community has done that and was one of the first to do that. And the other thing that the minister also recognized is, and again, it's something that was mentioned by uh, the previous uh, speaker here uh, from the city, which is that um, we have tremendous settlement organizations that are held in tremendously high esteem uh, uh, nationally, and they're recognized as being excellent agencies. And you think about the uh, the new Canadian Center for Excellence, organizations like West and MCC that that help uh, you know that help uh, refugees and and help immigrants, for example, get uh, get settled in in our community. And so we have incredible organizations that do tremendous work. But the pressure is real. The pressure is absolutely real. We're very much alive to it. The minister absolutely understands it. And even speaking yesterday with um, with the uh, community uh, uh, legal aid and, and also with um, uh, legal assistance Windsor a local organization, and they even said that the pressure on their organization from this influx is is absolutely tremendous. So we're we're, we're trying to get other communities um, uh, to also sh- shoulder this uh, this challenge so that mm. it doesn't fall on just our community and and uh, and others like Cornwall. Um, but at the same time, we're having conversations at the federal level in terms of what else can we do to support communities like ours. And so, uh, Eric, I do want to I do want to jump in quickly just for time. Yep. But this, the city report says it needs to pause additional asylum seekers from being sent here. So, will the government respect that request? Well, the minister also also shared uh, with the mayor that uh, we really are uh, we're pretty much right now at the peak, and so uh, we have about uh, we have about 440 hotel rooms that are currently booked. That's not going to increase. Uh, that may increase a small amount, but, but we really are sort of at the peak here. And, and the, the focus right now is obviously getting other communities to shoulder uh, this challenge. And so getting other communities to take on asylum seekers so that it doesn't just fall on communities like ours and, and Cornwall and, and, and the handful of others. So that's something that we're working on right now. At the same time, we're working with our American counterparts to get that safe third country agreement fixed. And, uh, and at the same time as well, too, we're having those conversations at the federal level in terms of what other support we can provide to the provinces and municipalities that are responsible for settling uh, uh, immigrants and, and, and the newcomers to our, uh, to our community. How can we help them even more? And one of the ways that we're actually looking to help is a lot of the, uh, the newcomers here are actually, the asylum seekers here, actually have, uh, uh, have skills. And so... Um, they're skilled workers, for example, and they have other skills, and so they're they're uh, instantly employable. And so, what we're working on right now is seeing how can we reduce um, the time it takes for them to get a work permit. We're we're looking at getting them work permits within a week of their arrival, and connecting them with employers so that they can start um, to uh, they can enter the labor force, and they can also help us address some of the labor shortages that we have in our in our community as well, too. So, we're approaching this from um, from all uh, angles. Uh, to get this issue resolved. And again, we have to approach it both with compassion, uh, with pragmatism, um, but also with a sense of urgency as well, too, because we understand that it's putting pressure on 
uh, on our community. And, and that's something that the minister had communicated directly with Mayor Dilkins in his conversation yesterday. The city is also asking that the federal government appoint a lead agency to deal with all of this. Do you think that's a reasonable, reasonable request? I think it's absolutely reasonable, and it's one that I raised uh, personally with uh, with Minister Fraser, and uh, and and so uh, obviously uh, it would be quite helpful uh, to have a coordinating uh, uh, body here that can work with the local uh, organizations, work with the City of Windsor, work with the local settlement agencies uh, to support. And it's absolutely something that I raised directly with uh, with Minister Fraser. Lastly, Eric, do you see this as a temporary issue, or is this likely going to, going to be an ongoing thing? I think this is an issue that, uh, again, the key here is getting that safe third country agreement fixed uh, with our U.S. counterparts. Uh, I'm optimistic we will get that done in in the very near future. Uh, So that is absolutely critical to stem that influx. I mean, this is unprecedented, really. But I just want to say and echo what was was said in uh, your previous uh, caller, uh, is that uh, this community has shown yet again how incredibly welcoming we are, how incredibly generous we are. Windsor always steps up, and I think that's something that's recognized uh, not just here in our community, it's, it's recognized uh, really nationally as well. Eric, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Eric Kuzmierczak is the Liberal MP representing Windsor-Tecumseh.